Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to a brand new episode of the Mindset Kitchen Podcast with your host, Chef Hashim, and my man, Kareem. So, Kareem, what's good? What's happening? What's going on, Chef? Welcome back, everybody, to a brand new episode of the Mindset Kitchen. Everything's good, bro. The barbers have opened up, as you can see, so I finally, I no longer look like a caveman, which is a cause for celebration, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I always thought that was part of your style. I did not know uh, barbers were actually uh, closed. No, man, no yeah, way. But anyways, <laughs> uh, like, like, like I noticed, yeah, you're r- definitely looking more dapper uh, today. Yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I just, I just feel like, um, I don't know, man. I don't know if uh, other uh, of our male listeners can relate, but sometimes like getting a haircut just makes you feel like you have a lighter, uh, lighter head, more clarity, you know? Yeah, I think uh, for me, it's haircut. And even when I wash my car, when I mm. wash, uh, I give it like proper wash when I'm driving, I feel like I'm driving a brand new car or something like that, even though it's like 10 year old. Yeah, yeah. I know uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, so today, I think let's jump right in uh, to today's topic. So uh, w- uh, w- what's been happening is since our last recording, uh, I got on to uh, reading a new book. Okay, and uh, basically, this was not a book that I actually, uh, you know, wanted. It was not in my list at all. It was not in my radar. But there is something like you know, as 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 always, there is one of the challenges which I was thinking. You know, there is something that I wanted to address in myself for a long time, which I have uh, gotten uh, remarks and feedback at different points in my life, be it professionally, be it personally. Yeah is a complaint that I don't listen enough. Like, for example, I do, I'm not a very good listener, okay? And I think I'm sure uh, for people who've been in our journey with the podcast self might see, you know, like, you know, how a lot of it manifests even in the podcast sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like, I think initially we used to have that a lot uh, where when you're speaking, I jump in, uh, you know, quite a lot and... You know, some of our good listeners had made a point. Then we started being, at least I started being more conscious. I think you are a better listener than me. And, <laughs> and you know, we worked on it. But uh, the interesting thing is uh, I was, you know, in one of those journeys of, you know, self-development, you can say, you know, like some areas which surprisingly, you know, got a focus mm-hmm. And then I started, uh, okay, I noted down, you know, this is something that I, 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 I need to start working on even better. I need to get mm-hmm. good at. And then I started looking at, okay, what kinds of podcasts are there? What is the kind of uh, content that's out there, you know, when it comes to getting better at listening? Mm-hmm. And there you go. I come across this very, very interesting book called, uh, the book's name itself is called You're Not Listening. Nice. <laughs> okay. And... Uh, you know, uh, as as usual, you know, that book rule that I have. So I had taken a break from Audible for three weeks. I suspended my subscription because most of the books I consume, I, book on, uh, I consume on audio, yeah? So I just reactivated my subscri- subscription. And the first book I got after that is uh, straight away. I found the book. I just bought it. And honestly saying, I'm still not done. Mm. But uh, I'm through the first two chapters and it is, you know, you know, that mo- uh, moment of uh, the eureka moment that you actually say, where you feel like yeah. you've found the solution. <laughs> you know, you have that every time, like for me personally, I have this moments every time I uh, discover a new, something mm. new, when I learn something new, yeah. where I feel, you know, my life could have been better. Yeah. Or I would have a less uh, problematic or less stressful life if this one this something small like this i would have implemented so i just want to jump right in so basically the book is called uh, you're not listening by uh, kate murphy and uh, so the whole context of the book or the whole topic that we're going to li- uh, we, we're going to talk about today is how to get better at listening yeah and uh, basically the art of listening, you can actually say. So we will touch upon the topic and definitely people who are listening, they can, uh, you know, uh, check the book out and uh, get more stuff. So what I wanted to do in today's episode is I want to get, because this is a topic that I just sprung upon you, like me and Kareem, we did not get much time to discuss about this topic. So I want to get real time feedback, (laughs) Kareem, from you about the topic and about the things that we're going to discuss. So I I will get started. So 
you know when i started looking to this book one of the reasons you know before what i saw in the mm-hmm. book was uh i felt like seriously you know be uh, parenting the parenting journey right actually is what uh, took me uh, into this like basically uh, you know um, uh, my my elder kid uh, you know uh, she's she's quite a handful so usually i keep upskilling myself in order to make sure i keep up mm. or you know how i can you know be better at particular yeah. things so one of the things i noticed or i read a, quite a lot and i one of my very close friends she is uh, she is a positive discipline uh, practitioner mm. now it's a, it's a thing okay where you know uh, this is what she does so one of the very important pointers uh, that i was able to gather after a discussion with her is that i need to be more uh, i need to listen more to my kid than me telling her more stuff like you know so apparently once you start listening a lot of the problems or the challenges go away mm. and in this book uh, how how the author uh, you know builds up the whole case is she calls this a lost art mm. i love okay? that okay and uh, how she, yeah she calls this a lost art because she builds this case yeah in the first introduction where she's talking about just kareem you know honestly just think about us growing up being in school being in university being in our entrepreneurial journey there is clubs for uh, debates there is toastmasters mm-hmm. there is basically uh, 80 90% of the subjects the topics everything is about uh, anything but listening mm-hmm. okay there are no courses okay there is the art of uh, like you know bettering your mindset getting better at finances getting better at relationships getting better at everything but the art of listening is something which is nobody speaks yeah. about and she actually makes a very uh, interesting case also which she says like all of us honestly saying we are listening okay that's what we say you know i listen to podcasts i listen to audio books i listen to the news but uh, what 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 she saying is what is happening is uh, there is one person of the uh, world population are the people who create content mm-hmm. really if you look on social media okay like 54% of the people are what they call uh, lurkers lurkers are people who don't usually mm-hmm. post they just follow so most of the time this one person of the people who are creating content basically these people are the ones who actually create a narrative of whatever you know beat politics beat religion beat whatever you know so what happens is uh, everybody is always about uh, they are hearing but they are not listening actually so the difference between hearing and listening is uh, hearing is uh, passive okay and listening is active right the meaning of that is for example i can listen to a podcast or i can hear a podcast and the biggest difference yeah. is if i'm listening to a podcast while i'm running while i'm doing something right i'm listening to it but i'm listening to it passively yeah, yeah. yeah but i'm not actually actively listening to it and we all know the difference what happens uh you know when we uh, actively listen versus you know when you passively listen totally but man. before going ahead you know i, I just want to throw Yeah I just want to throw the ball over to you Karim what do you think uh, how important is listening and as for to you in your in your experience yeah where do you think uh, how much uh, does listening as for to you impacts impact our lives do you think it's a very important aspect of life uh of course man absolutely i was just thinking about what you said at the beginning man around how um like you know you that you got that feedback but um I honestly don't I honestly think you're a great listener man you know <laughs> like especially in the episodes which is usually like how we're interacting these days you know you build up on my ideas mm-hmm. I build up on your ideas and you wouldn't have been able to build up on it if uh, you were not an active listener in that sense so um so yeah man you know you you have <laughs> you have that you're being you you're, you're being nice Karim you're being Bro, being you nice you know me man I'm I'm direct <laughs> you know uh, and, and 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 this is this is my this is my opinion mm. on the matter But yeah, I suppose like it's funny cuz my my experience with it is um a couple of years ago, I think like early in my uh my marriage, like I got this feedback from my wife. She's like, "Hey, you're not I want you to do I want you to be a better active listener, you know?" And it was active. absolutely uh, crushing, you know, cuz I was like, "What do you mean? Like I thought I'm like a good listener and stuff." But it turns out that just being quiet while someone else is speaking essentially waiting for your turn to speak and thinking of what you're going to say regardless of what's being said as opposed to like listening with like an empty mind like you know basically you're 
the only thing your mind is doing is purely listening, not like preparing whatever else is going to be set after that. There's a huge difference between those two things, man. And sometimes people think, for people who didn't understand how deep the topic is, like me in the beginning, I used to think you just do that so that you feel like, you, you so that you do it out of politeness. You make sure that, you know, the other person feels heard so that they hear you. It's it's really a polite and respect thing more than anything. But what I realized, bro, is that mm -hmm. it's, you know, sure, yeah, it's a polite and respectful thing, but probably the main reason why people do it is because people can tell if you heard them or not. And saying, uh-huh, or I know what you mean, doesn't necessarily reflect that you know what they mean as much as you being able to really prove that you know what they mean um, and, and to share something that, that like, once again, proves that you didn't just read the, the cover of the book, but that you actually read the actual book, you know, and that you, you were part of, a part of that conversation in that sense. And of course, there's professional implications for active listening as well as personal mm -hmm. implications. But yeah, I'll let you continue, man. I mean, uh, it's, you know, uh, I'm glad that I threw the bo ball at you on the first thing that you said, right, about, I think, I think, uh, Kareem, I'm, I'm super guilty of this. Okay, I'm going to like, in today's episode, because I think I'm going to take like a lot of, uh, I'm going to self-punch myself quite a lot of time, okay? I'll, I'll, <laughs> so I'll bear be with me. I'll be happy to participate in this case. <laughs> <laughs> so, the thing is, one of my biggest, I would say, challenge, yeah, uh, but I would say it has uh, subsided quite a lot in the past one or two years. Now, this is subsided. Uh, now, the point I'm talking about is when somebody is speaking, the reason I'm listening is to, for example, tell them what I think about. Like, for example, that famous quote, you know, don't listen to reply, listen to, you know, actually yeah. understand. So, uh, one of the biggest ideas, right, in this book, uh, what the author claims uh, or uh, author was trying to do this, listening actually really goes beyond uh, just hearing what people have to say. Yeah. And and uh, one very interesting stat, okay, this, I, 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 I'm not there yet in the book, but I was, uh, immediately what I did was I heard uh, two, three episodes of the author, you know, where she was explaining. So there was this crazy stat, yeah, crazy stat, which actually uh, was presented it says all communication, right? If you break down communication, what communication actually is, it says 55% of a communication is non-verbal. Mm -hmm. Okay? And 38% uh, is tone of voice. Mm -hmm. And the remaining, I don't know what is left, uh, that is 80, uh, almost like uh, 7 or 8% is actually what we are actually saying. Mm. So, so, Connecting to your point, active listening is when you're somebody is speaking to you, okay, and when you are not just listening to them passively, but actively means you're going to actually pick up a lot of cues. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are cues, for example, uh, verbal, like for example, uh, non verbal, uh, you know, which is uh, what do you call emotional. Like, for example, if you're actively listening, you'll understand what kind of emotions they're actually, you know, processing at the, at, at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For example, what is, where are they coming from? And based on the tone of voice, you can actually understand. For example, if I'm talking right now, if somebody's uh, listening to me very attentively, you can see I have a more serious or, you know, serious kind of, a, you know, like it's like I'm trying to make a point even if you look at my body language as well. Yeah. So most of the time, what most of us do now, for example, when I was in sales, I also very well understood that I need to listen. So what I used to do is most of the meetings that I used to go, I used to actually sit and listen. But what I was happening was I was listening, but all I wanted to do was just to finish so that the client or the other person listens so that I can just, you know, go back and repeat what I think about it basically comment or basically I've already thought about the solution and and the most interesting and uh, it's it's a bit scary as well yeah uh, scary in the sense it's uh, alarming one of the biggest problems uh, they say in the world right now beat millennials beat boomers more millennials are facing right now is loneliness okay now uh, if I would if I want to if I am to say for example loneliness, and listening has a very big connection. And when I heard this first time when I was reading, I'm like, how is how how can this be connected? 
okay being lonely so they say many people today the kind of lives that we are in we are not like uh, physically we are not alone okay we are in offices we are at gyms we are going yeah. to places we are surrounded by people but loneliness basically connects to people not having meaningful relationships yeah. not feeling like they're hurt basically and the, y- yes so the main idea is the only way you can have a meaningful relationship is not okay the the starting point is not somebody listening to you how this whole cycle starts is when you start listening to somebody genuinely you know this again another punch for myself is i always try to uh sometimes i try to understand and sometimes you know when i'm in a setting when i'm outside with people i uh, i i look around you know i see like i have very, like i have uh, i'm not saying i don't have meaning meaningful relationship like the few people i am close with i have like extremely meaningful but meaningful relationships but there are times when i have imagined why like what is that reason for example okay there are people who i wanted to like you know form a more meaningful bond or a more meaningful connection and i'm like i always thought like what is the reason like you know i am spending time with these people and i am exchanging ideas but after listening to this book after understanding this concept i think one of the very reason that is like maybe when i'm listening i'm not actually listening attentively so basically what they say the whole idea of listening is not about what they are saying it's about understanding what they are yeah. feeling trying to have that uh, they call this by the way there's a terminology called the mind dance mind dance okay now mind dance they call it where basically you and the person who you are listening to who you are talking to get to a place where you guys are in sync and there is science behind it basically they hook them up to fmris basically it's a sort of thing to see your brain waves so they say when two people are in sync the waves of your brain are extremely similar mm-hmm. the patterns and this is when for example they call it uh, now very interesting also a theory for example which i came across they call, you know the, the attachment theory right there are four types of attachments no okay so they say yeah it's a very interesting concept bro the four kinds of attachment so they also call it so the person one of the person who's a very uh, very big expert in this attachment theory she calls it snatches of magic okay it's a very interesting term but what she calls this is in that level of discussion where you have that eureka moment where both of the people have this sense of connection now this does not mean you have to talk about like deep topics like the universe and the the concept of uh, uh, the purpose yeah, of life it just life. means that it just it means could that be something you need to be in sync essentially in what you're talking about yeah. in sync and and the only way for example this can be achieved is when you actually mm-hmm. listen you know attentively and one of the biggest challenges you know in this book uh, there are like uh, three to four things uh, that the author mentions they said she she calls them you know what we or like what you are mentioning and the challenge i have mentioned she calls it assumption ear plugs assumption ear plugs okay, okay. as yeah assumption ear plugs are for example at your workplace you know somebody is coming to you with a problem or they're going to tell you something and if you remember you know being reds okay having red in our personality uh and if you remember uh, in uh, surround by idiots one of the challenges of the red is uh before people come they all they already think they know what the solution yep. is yep happens to me every single day man <laughs> bro uh, uh, me me yeah. too i'm with you on this yeah. and 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 the problem is one is you never actually find a solution and sometimes it's not about giving a solution sometimes all you need to do is most of the people are you if you start with understanding that people are not uh they're smart like people are capable of finding solutions if you just listen to it right one maybe the person in the process of telling you might find a solution second if you actually attentively listen you might understand where they're coming from how they are feeling so you know i like that it makes a so so she calls it assumption uh, ear plugs where you know before the moment you have this ear plugs on you can never listen yeah and another very interesting uh, concept in the book she uh, and she she actually mentions uh, the the concept of listening to opposing views and this is also a very big one big challenge which i have overcome over the years is this like for example i have a lot of friends who have a plethora or extremely different views from mine about life about religion about politics okay and most of the time when i have had uh, fallouts with people primarily were used to 
because of views like these okay in my life like for example if somebody has a completely different uh, political view or a religious view okay and these are close friends yeah people who were very close to me at one point and because of reasons like this because when they are speaking i am never openly listening and when i am not openly listening even if i am right or wrong when i am that's not the point when i'm talking back they also right. don't listen so this crazy circle starts so they say listening to an opposing view if when connected to a person's brain it is like same your brain behaves in a similar way as when you're ch- being chased by a bear like or an animal yeah you feel like you're you're so very kind of, is like threatened almost yeah so they so so for me this took it home because uh, in this in this years there are few of my friends who i've grown more close to even though having extremely opposite mm, views interesting and when i look into the only reason the only reason that has happened it did not happen with everybody but there are few people i felt like you know i really need to make it work with these guys you know like these are friends that i really need around me you know so the only reason this has happened is because i actually started listening to them and don't get me wrong so in the book also what she says is listening does not mean you have to agree hmm yeah to everything you can still hold your view yeah. world view but at the same time you have to be uh, open to listen so it is perfectly fine to have a separate view but you can you know end of hearing you empathize with them you understand and you can say you know what it's perfectly fine but i still believe you know i know where you're coming from but i think this is uh, the way i see it and i completely respect mm. you know uh, where you are coming from as well yeah. yeah have you had this experience bro like you know uh, opposing views how how have you experienced this in your life yeah of course man um you know yeah i think it's it's happened many times before and it's interesting because it's always about trying to find a way to show them that you understand where they're coming from sometimes you even understand the root cause or the root cause or the root um, the ultimate goal essentially but sometimes yeah people have different uh, differing opinions and i i like to think of it as the perfect moment to show them that you actually are listening to them and because sometimes people may change i don't know if you've ever experienced this bro but sometimes people start to talk to you differently and they choose what they want to share with you and what they don't want to share or even what like how they share something with you based on what they expect the response will be if someone is always going to mm. be for example if someone is always going to be challenging me in what i say i'm just subconsciously going to build this habit of like okay you know what i'm not going to share with them what i'll normally share i only share you know the the good times or like the stuff that will be easy to to talk about but the more um sophisticated stuff maybe this is not the right person to share it with or maybe i'm going to dumb it down completely so that you know i don't raise any flags um that sort of thing and maybe other people could be doing the same thing you know with um w- with us as well right like when depending on like how we're doing that 100% and so and so if we if we get to a stage where we're able to like you know really sell sell the person in front of not sell the person but like um convince the person in front of us that we genuinely do want to listen to everything they have to say good bad agree disagree i think it's just going to create like a great healthy you know re- relationship overall where communication is open and transparent and i hate the fact that like open and transparent has become such cliche words but i think it's the perfect way to explain it to be honest with you and uh bro it is cliche right but the interesting thing is so much study which shows that still nobody listens mm. and That's connecting it. to what you're saying right connecting to what you're saying uh, i think again i have faced this a lot uh, even at workplace in initial years for example people will not come to me uh, with a suggestion or an idea because how aggressive i am at shooting <laughs> things down yeah this is something at workplace i have actively worked even in my personal life i'm really really uh, i would say it's a challenge which i'm actively working mm-hmm. on yeah now especially after understanding this concept but the thing is in the book she calls it having the listening stance you know the stance when you're standing if somebody is coming to attack mm-hmm. you you stand in a stance of defense yeah. and if you remember the stats says communication uh, 55% or 58% of communication is non-verbal, non-verbal. so no matter how how much of it like you know uh, for example if you act as if you are listening if you like because this is something a very interesting thing i was speaking to my uh, colleague uh, and he was saying you know what after reading this i had this 
crazy moment and i was like you know bro you know uh, you know this is what i was reading you know basically being a good listener and he's like yeah you know i've noticed one of my friends uh, he 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 says his life is solved since he started just nodding to everything that his mm-hmm. wife says basically just listening i'm like the, the book it clearly says just nodding or just listening for the heck of listening does not solve the problem because the person who's listening uh, speaking to you okay end of the day understands yeah they're they're, they're not stupid because one yeah. very <laughs> yeah so a very important point in this book she also mentioned is it's not about just listening to people when they are talking to you it's also about listening to people when you are talking mm-hmm. to them because you can easily gauge you know where uh, this yeah. person yeah they are listening to you uh, and end of the day you know uh, i think end of the day it's all about uh, you know we talk about mindsets over here mm-hmm. and i think this is a very important aspect to actually inculcate in our mindsets because you know from a very young and early age you know all of us uh, when we grow up when we study i think the problem uh, dates back you know uh, the, nobody praised anybody for a good listener yeah it was never a, it was never a okay. school subject like you were saying and it was never you know like a physical thing even at your ha- even at your even at your household even in your school nobody praised yeah. anybody saying it's a very good listener yeah. on the other hand everybody praised like i was always praised they used to say like the gift of gab yeah. i'm not surprised bro <laughs> okay because yeah because i can speak and i speak and as you know you go ahead in life you think this is yeah. the skill you it know re- and this is what a lot it, of yeah. people and a lot of people actually think like listening does not get you anywhere or on the other hand talking gets you a lot yeah. ahead and clearly clearly after going through this book i think uh, that's not the case <laughs> so yeah so i think i think it's a very uh, you know i want to like you know one final statement i want to actually put as you know epictetus the guy the greek uh, philosopher yeah okay he actually had a very important a very famous saying like you know you are given one tongue and two ears yeah yeah and you should and you should you should okay speak in and can communicate in proportion to what you have been given yeah. yes and uh, i think even i think so it is it is something uh, that has been uh, uh, you know that's very important so maybe you know bro so wrapping it up definitely guys uh, read this book try to find out more about the art of listening and uh, i think once this book is done maybe definitely uh, kareem we can look into this topic maybe once more definitely. because i think this is a very very vast topic and uh, is there any final comments uh, that you want to add kareem i think it's going to come to me like when we do the part 2 on this topic but funny enough i was yeah. actually in listening mode as we were talking about the art of listening today so yeah thanks for um, opening a lot of new ideas man in uh, in my mind uh, i think uh, i think it'll be good for us to have that discussion um, in the part 2 section uh, but yeah hopefully this was a good introduction for a lot of people listening and let us know your comments as well let us know your questions If there are things that you have been struggling with with regards to the art of listening maybe we can have um, an open dialogue about it in the form of these episodes. Uh so guys uh let us know uh, what you think if you like these uh, the topic today uh if you liked the content if there is anything specific if you if you definitely want us to do a uh, part 2 where uh, we can share more uh, actionable tips from the book uh and as usual subscribe and uh, share the episode we will see you in the next one take care guys and have a lovely week bye 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 guys <laughs>